Hi, and welcome to a new Plugin Guru video. My name is John Skippy Limcool. I'm proud, very proud, to get to show you a new library called Mega Magic Bells and Winds. To sum it up really quickly, this is the first library that has samples performed by me specifically for a library. Um, most of my stuff has been made in the computer, using computer, using samples from past years, so forth. I did a new sampling session and uh, I recorded these instruments. I put them into Omnisphere on the A layer, of course. And then I ran them through my special processing. My pan flute. I don't play very well. I played this. I got the attack right. I used Melodyne to make sure the tuning did not waver. And down here, when you get to the pan flutes, there's a whole bunch of, let's see, flutes. Oh, there we go. There's Chippy, there's Sad. Here's a celebration. Let's do the dry version first. So many ways to use it. And this is short notice. It's all it was. But put through my processing. Becomes magical. And then I looped it so you have it for pads. And it stays it's right there. So in a nutshell, that is the basics of the library, is it's a whole bunch of different instruments that I've recorded both dry and then I have processed them with magic up to four layers of reverbs being used in different amounts, additional signal processing to bring out the levels and fill up the body. And then also the loop version. And there's a whole bunch. It goes all over the place. Not everything has a dry and not everything has, uh, well, most things are looped, but not everything is looped. So you have, You don't have a dry version of this, but you do have the loop, so you can play pads. In a few minutes, I'll do a complete walkthrough. It's going to take time, so you have to be patient. But I want to first just fill you in on how this happened, a little of the history. So this is the third in this series of Mega Magic. The first was Mega Magic Dreams. This was a library that I kind of was like just kind of prototyping and playing around with for a while before I really buckled down and turned it into something. Omnisphere came out with the ability to play a single sample. And uh, if you take, a, well, here, let's go back to Mega Magic Wins for a second. Here's the dry. When you play a Pi, it goes away pretty fast. So there's very specific ways you can use it. Well, I found that if I put reverb and processing on it, it will last much longer. And it's got this really cool thing. The other thing that's awesome, if I was to take the dry version and I was to turn on reverb and give it a whole bunch of reverb and make it really long reverb like I did. Let's see, I think let's do two reverbs. Let's have it also do the pro ver or the uh, spring reverb. Make it really wide so it sounds really cool. Okay, now, so I've got this reverb I've created like I did, I, I use other reverb in software, but for example, so this rings down in a long time, right? If I turn the effects off, but the thing is this, because the reverb is an effect, when I play it, it 
turns to mush very quickly. I found that if I baked that ambience into the sample, it doesn't talk to the samples when you play new notes. So they don't interact and get muddy. So that's the whole idea. That's what's mega magic. Okay. So I did that with all these things for Mega Magic Dreams, because that was the first one to do this. And I did guitars. And the guitars came out great. The keyboards came out great. All of these dream pianos, my favorite. Right? They came out so cool. And so everybody was asking for dry versions of these. And when I built these, I wasn't thinking about flexibility. I was just building. And so I didn't include any dry. Pads. I decided I wanted to try looping because one of the other thing you could do with the samples is loop them and make them so that they sustain and honestly you could read them. So and the pads in Omnisphere have been around for a long time, so I felt Omnisphere needed new pad source. So that's where this came from, was for new source and to play with the looping abilities, right? Okay, well, fast forward like a year and a half, and it's, it's like time to get back on the horse. Let's let's get back on the mega magic thing. And for I, I was originally the guitars and stuff were really great in in the mega magic dreams. So I hired Eric Hailstone, who's a friend of mine, been a friend of mine for over twenty five years. He's worked with me on chord projects. He would work and do combinations and voicing and stuff on projects that I was a part of since way back when. And so we've been good friends. And I said, hey, would you be interested in playing guitars? I'll hire you for a session. Um, and he had a friend that had a really nice studio. So we went to the friend's studio. And Eric played some really awesome guitar source. And a couple things that I wanted to do differently. I wanted to have, like, say, s six notes or so at least. So I could play more, a little more realistic to a guitar, not just a single sample. And I want to dry, so I wanted my own source so I could start dry and then build. And I wanted just a whole variety of different guitar sounds. So we recorded for a long time him playing guitar. And at the end of the session, for 30 minutes, 26 minutes, I set up a microphone and <clears throat> I brought my tote with all my percussion and drum instruments that I collect. And I've been going and buying new ones every now and then. I bought the new thumb kalimba and all these things. And so I went down the list and recorded these at a recording session. And it just goes on and on and on of me playing different. Okay, there we go. Yep. There's the cowbell. All right, we're rolling. Some of those high bells. Her harmonica, I think. Oh, the flutes. So I did all these different samplings with flutes, harmonica. I've had this since I was like 10 years old. It's an echo harmonica. So it has two reeds, so it can give that nice detuning chorusy effect. And that ended up making really, really, really cool source. All that became really cool. When I got home and I chopped it all up in my computer, I use Logic, check this out. This is a screenshot of everything. Uh, all of this stuff is guitar, and then down here at the very bottom, this very bottom row is my percussion pass. And I did one pass in one session for 26 minutes, and when I got home and I loaded everything up and chopped it and spit it out, took a handful of days to do that, I had like over 400 amazing guitar, and then all these wind and bell sounds. And I'm like, oh my goodness. This is incredible. It was too much for one library. So I decided to split this into two libraries. So this one is Mega Magic Bells and Winds. Um, the next version that will be coming out is Mega Magic Strings and Synths. And I have a whole lot of different strings, all the guitar stuff, um, and synths from my modulars, from my Moog, from software, all sorts of incredible source. Really, it's equally incredible to this. So that's where this came from. And I, I'm thrilled how it turned out. And at the end of this all project, I was, I, I was really happy because 
you know, normally I, I do these libraries and I'm like, I give myself a deadline. I'm going to release it on this day. And up until like five minutes before that day, I'm still working on the library. And this one, I actually had it. So like I had three or four days extra. I'd actually give myself for, I could think of promotion and how to do something on Facebook really cool or something like that. And then I was talking to Steve Tavlioni. Steve Tavlioni is a woodwind guru. Unbelievable player. He plays the Iwi. He's played on so many films. It's not even funny. He uses my sounds on all these films. It's very awesome to have a great relationship with this person. He's a, he's a really nice guy as well as everything else. And I told him about the library. I sent him an early version because he's one of my testers to test libraries to see how it works. He lets me know if things are out of tune, stuff like that. And he said, these wins are really good. And they're played really well. And they're recorded really well. They play. They're great. He goes, I want to give you some of my flutes. I have some samples I want to send to you. And my jaw just dropped to the table. I was like, what? He goes, yeah. He goes, I have some stuff I think you could use. It'd be different than what you have. And it would like maybe add some stuff to the library. I'm like, so he sent me. Un unbelievable. Truly. The flute in the water phone. Get out of here. I mean, insane. Harmonic flute. So these are in the library. These were used in movies, TV shows, Supernatural, Vikings, all of those things he's worked on. He's had this as part of his toolkit. And they've been used in all of these movies. He used them in all... And they're in this library. I mean, it's just like so... Cool! I can't believe it. And he sent me dry. And of course, I put it through the Mega Magic processing chain. And it just became unbelievable. So this library is huge in scope. And the quality is something I'm super, super proud of. And on top of that, my friends, there's more. That's not all we've got. On top of that, I have my own voicing team now of guys that I'm very proud of. I've got Airwave and Exosun and Kid Anthem, Jason Schopfer, Tim Dale, uh, a, a very dear friend of mine for many years that works at Ilio, who has made a lot of libraries for Ilio, Mike Babbitt, made patches for this. He loved the sounds and he's like, I want to make some patches. And so I'm just so blessed to have a team that all the, at the end of, there's 150 patches in the core library. And we'll talk about the core versus the, the, the signature. Signature, all the ones with a Z at the beginning of the name, there's 150 of them. And these are patches made by my team and myself. And they go here. I'll give you just a couple of examples of this kind of stuff. It's so cool. Um, this is when Jason Schofer started and then I teamed up and we finished together, but it's so cool. This is using the flute and the water phone and the alto harmonics. So it's not just boring flutes and boring bells. I want to make it really clear. This is all over the place. There's pads in here. Like this is my warm blanket. This is, I made it sound like this for cork synthesizers using the pad flute sample for years. It's the warmest, biggest wet blanket. And then there's all sorts of really cool special effects. 
and the mod wheel. So, we'll get to all this stuff. I just want to show you the scope of the library. It's huge. Because on top of all this stuff, there's, a, if we go to this really cool wind stuff, oh, here, you'll, you'll love this. Check this out. So it goes all over the place, okay? Huge. So cool how it turned out. Super proud. So let's go through the library from the start. Before we do the complete start, I want to explain there's three versions of most of these patches. There's the Mega Magic, there's the Dry, and there's the Loop. Mega Magic doesn't have anything to the name. So you know if it doesn't have a Dry or a Loop, it's going to have the processing and all the cool stuff in it for the core library. All of these have the mod wheel assigned to do all sorts of tricky things. The patches are programmed to the absolute highest level of programmability. Every one of these, uh, like for example, here's Baby Bell. Right, there, but that was FM. Uh, Ring Mod. The Wave Shaper. You want a little like alternative thing. Uh, unison gives you an octave. And fifths. And harmonia gives you even more octaves. And then granular just gives you magic stuff. This cool swirly. You'll hear pitches coming in. Okay, and on top of that, all three effect slots in the insert and the global are turned off but have hidden. So you can immediately trick these out. And that's the case for every one, dry. Turn this on. Okay, so that's going on. The mod wheel on every one is varying the attack, and it's very important because I wanted, I don't, I don't have round robin, I don't have lots of samples, it's one sample. You can get away with faking all sorts. You're hitting in different places on the bell. So the mod wheel does cool things. When you get to the loop versions of the patches, they are slow attack. So they're ready to be used to play pads. Now, the baby bell attack with the mod wheel goes away. With the loops, it does the opposite. It goes from slow to fast. So all sorts of really cool, especially if you're doing film and you need kind of that mysterious, you need variations in the sound, you need to be changing. That's what I was thinking about when I did that. Having said that, be aware that because of that modulation setup to the wheel for the what is it, amp envelope attack trim, that means when you move this uh, the attack, it doesn't work as you would expect because it's already rerouted to the mod wheel and it's got parameters set to it. So be aware of that. When, if you're playing with the mod wheel and then the attack and you're not getting, it's like, I want this to be fast, but you have this up and it's slow still or something like that. That's why. Just, just saying. Okay, so let's start at the top. Just so we're clear. So there's three variations. They have different things assigned. They all have all these hidden parameters, hidden, hidden synth effects. These are, I'm not going to turn them on and off for every patch, but you saw how I turn them on and off. So that's all set up and ready to go. Um, the last thing I want to show you, and then we'll get to this, is right here at the end of the winds, at the start of the signature, the very first signature patch, is a switch patch. And I only made one. You can think of these patches as a template and then you call it up and then you can change things to make it something else. What the switch patch does is when you play normal,
it has the mega magic version which means it has the reverb it's got the the mod wheel up switches to play layer b and b is the dry version so so you can go from or in between And that's how you can get less of the Mega Magic effect by mixing between the dry and the wet of a sound. And it's very easy to just go in here and go to A. A is the reverb side or the mod wheel down side. You could reverse it if you want. Hit this button and go through the list. Let's say harmonica reverb. And let's go to layer B. And let's make this be the harmonica one dry. So now when I have the mod wheel down, Okay, so you can easily get a mod wheel controller setup for switching between the wet and the dry versions of, of anything in the library. I did it for one and I call it the Z1 start. It's right there in the middle of the list, so be aware of that. You can use that and go through the list and make it whatever you want. So Airy Block is one that's created in synth DSP land, so there's no dry version. And the loop version is nice and... Okay. Baby Bell. Here it is, dry. And here it is. And then the loop. High bell bar is this guy right here. I recorded that. And so try it. Hi, neighbor. But the, uh, the uh, Mega Magic version. See, that mod wheel comes in really handy for doing cool stuff like that. Uh, the medium is just a lower pitch. And it had more detuning to it, so I like that. Uh, bright marimba is another DSP. I used... Um, Applied Acoustic Synthesis's Chromophone 2 for these. A lot of that and structure were my choices for this because they are physical models and they're great sounds and I could kind of customize and shape the sounds and do some fun things. Acrylian Log Drum is a... using structure you can kind of that rolly bowl effect uh, looped is really beautiful okay chorus dreams is the super bright vs bell love to make sounds like that been doing that for many many years Okay, uh, cowbell. Uh, this is this guy right here. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the the cowbell. Then dry. And right next to me. 
it's very cool to be able to do that, right? After the cowbells, there's finger symbol. There it is, dry. Uh, there's handbell, which is really nice. There's a bright and a soft one. So the soft one. Right. Yeah, it's this. So this is I handpicked from like six or seventy that they had at the uh, percussion shop. I just recorded that, and uh, that's tuned. Also, B is a sine wave in hiding, so I can check tuning, and you could tune it down if you want it to be an octave thing. Because I have to check the tuning of every one of these patches before they go out. So there's dry, and the Mega Magic version is lovely. Just lovely stuff. Heavenly Toll Chime is one of my favorites. So cool. And the pad version of this is. So you can see why I'm calling it Mega Magic instead of Pads or Dreams, because now there's a little bit of both in the whole library. Here's a really cool sculpture, and I think I had um, Chromophone 2 used in this too. Uh, lively Vibes. It's amazing how nicely these transpose across the keyboard. Metal airy. Uh, the Robotalic is there's B flat three, B flat four, B flat five, B flat six for the different pitches. So this is a secret, don't tell anybody, but a week after this comes out or so, I'm going to be releasing some multis for free to add to the library. So um, if you're seeing this after this video has come out by like a month or whenever, since it's on the internet forever, um, the library will probably have those multis in it. But for those of you just now watching this for the first time as the library is introduced, there's no multis right now, but there will be. So stay tuned. In a week or so, there'll be a whole bunch of nice multis. This is using sculpture. Isn't that cool? Now, Space Glock is one where I took a, a different approach. This is four different velocities in software using FM8. This is actually a patch that I made for the FM8 power pack that I recorded for this. And so we go from super soft. So there will be a multi using all these as velocity switching. Kalimba, there's like six or seven. We're back. It might seem like I was never gone. <clears throat> but half a day has passed because my daughter came to the house made brownies, we had dinner, incredible brownies. And she's more important than you. Sorry, nothing personal, but when she's here, she gets my attention fully. And she's about to go to bed, so I'm going to start with kalimbas. <laughs> this is kalimba one. love to play these. Now the dry of these are a little noisy. I did some shaping. 
I didn't denoise them. I could have, I could tell you nightmare stories of denoising 8,000 drum samples for the ballroom drum kit that's in the Korg o Kronos and Korg Kronos 2. All done by hand, one at a time. Denoised, edited multiple times. I've, I've been there. I did not denoise these. I like noise. I'm not afraid of noise. It used to be such an anti thing for noise, but you put this into the mix, you don't hear the noise and it becomes human. Now, if you need to do solo kalimba, you'd probably use the ones that are inside of Omnisphere because Omnisphere 2 came with some just stunningly well, 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 so well recorded. Those are perfect for if you're doing a solo kalimba. Anyway, the dry. Okay, and again, that switch program, that will let you switch them. Uh, What's it called? Z1 start. <laughs> uh, so there's six or seven different there's six different single hits and they're all different um, when we get to the flutes i named them so that you could kind of have a personality to them i didn't name these because the names are so big already probably should have but i did not now jam is unique um this is just i bef actually i think before i actually start playing the single hits i And when I put reverb on it, it just became this cool wash. I was like, that's really cool. And then I also took just the very last hit. So you have a hit, okay? So continue with bells, a vapor beam. This was Jason Schopfer's favorite sound. He made a number of bell patches. <clears throat> that used this. And they came out great. Uh, the loop for pads, of course. It's just great. Now the low, obviously for that low, if you're doing like, I've been watching the OJ Simpson <clears throat> documentary series and that would be perfect for that score. <laughs> Pecker. Anyway, so great. <clears throat> and that's where we end the bells. This is another one that would do the haunting, kind of the revenant kind of score with that really cool, just a weird texture thing that you build on top of. Okay. The winds, there's a number of different flutes. I just named them by numbers and a, like a personality. Here, oh, here's the dry. It's nice, but that reverb, I, I knew when the chiff, when I played that, I was like, the reverb is just going to make this incredible because it'll pick up that and it'll hold off the high pitch, but then the low pitch is going to come in long enough to sit in and become really cool. So... That's right. And the, the loop is just really... Very unique. Okay, short. This is... <laughs> it's called that because... That's all it was. It's just this little plastic recorder. most important thing in a sample is the attack. You gotta have the right shape, right? So put into the Mega Magic Reverb and it became this, this really cool. And again, really cool loops. Uh, flute three, body. through the reverb. It's 
So if you do ambient albums, you need that little flute that does the accents. I would say, look at that one. Uh, here's the uh, short shift. Woodwinds make really cool loops, as you can see. Uh, calm. And this one, I kept it with a short release on actually playing it so that you could play it more like a real flute, per se. It's not real flute, but. Okay. Uh, octaves, dry. And do you think that's gonna do cool stuff through the reverb? Oh yeah. Cool loops. And octaves too. So you have the octave up to start, but then it kind of settles in. And then smoothie. Okay. Harmonica. Single notes of a harmonica are really hard to sound like a real harmonica. It's more like an accordion. So you wouldn't use this for like blues harmonica soloing. It's a cool lead sound, no doubt. All the Euro house. I mean, this will be great for that kind of stuff. You know, go over here, <laughs> set on harmonia. Make the release short. And have a good time. Uh, timid. And the, the loops just... It's really cool because that little bit of pitch variation slows down and it's different for each note and it's organic. It's not synthesized LFOs. So it's changing. My breath was changing and speeding up and slowing down a little bit so that just has a life to it. So they're very interesting. I was very surprised how the harmonica turned out. I was thinking it could be really bad. And play the chords and it's just crazy crazy uh, the single is um, just the single that's the where do you go here's the double so it's got that the single only has a single so more the you know the anyway I'm not gonna try to play because it's not my thing to play very well. I have a good friend in New York that can play it like crazy. Just became piercing, it's so interesting. And the pads, the loops, same thing, that, that human Irregularity became really useful for something interesting.
So the cowboy is for the southern. I actually played, <laughs> there's actually harmonics in there from one of the other reeds I was playing for just a brief little bit. But it came out, it's, it's so useful. It's really cool. So I hope you like, <laughs> I hope you like this. Um, anyway, then single chord. And I set these up. I, with Omnisphere, you can move the slider to advance the sample start. So I could have taken this chord and just moved this. But I did that because in Serum and other places where this will show up, you don't have access to that parameter. So this way you have a chord hit. I'm going to be making this for Serum, so you'll be able to play it and it'll sound like that in Serum. Pan Flute. Pan Flute came out amazingly, amazingly nice. And then the all of these, all the pan flutes. Just sing to your heart. Uh, here's uh, sad. Celebration. So you got that kind of thing. And Peru. <laughs> Here's the dry. Very good for calliopes. For that kind of thing. But it works. So that was the extent of my library, the core stuff. And then, like I mentioned, Steve Tavlioni brought in these samples and gave him gave me links. I downloaded them. I loaded them up. I went crazy. Um, here's the uh, flute, alto flute, harmonics, um, dry. And you'll notice these are long samples. And it's looped. So it goes forever. And there's all this motion. And I mean, if you want interesting and unique, get a flute player. <laughs> now the Arabic flute solo is just, the performance itself is amazing. Still going. Still going. That's all one sample. And then right there I loop back to earlier in it. Okay, so that's like a 10, 15 second sample. It's crazy. And then you put it through the Mega Magic Reverb algorithm that I set up, and um, no words, just amazing. This is crazy. This gives me goose pimples. It's so cool. <laughs> All right, bass bansuri. Uh. Down like three or four octaves. 
insane. You want, you want big drones? Bam. Layer it with a sine wave to give yourself some body. I think I did that already. I gotta take it like down to minus. Ah, uh, minus 12. There you go. Now some of these, the pitch wavers a little bit because it is real performances and played slow, the pitch is gonna do so. Sometimes layering it with a sine wave is a good way to reinforce what the main pitch is for your mix so it doesn't sound too like out. Um, here is the dan dream dance. And again, this is one of those that's kind of like a, just a little taste of it would be really cool. Or it's one of those things where you, uh, you know, do that type of thing while you have like reverb after it and so forth. Uh, here's your flute harmonics. This is a minor second. This one's amazing because if you play it down low, you'll hear. That's his lips doing all that. And you go to the reverb version and it's just incredible. Amazing. So these are really fun to play with. There's so many um, harmonic pad. Which when you put through the processing, just makes it reinforce even more. I played at the beginning this. This is the flute and water phone, like crazy. So cool how it is. Uh, the tongue, I think it's like multiple takes. Awesome stuff and put through the reverb and it's Talk about something to build on top of, there you go. Um, here's the flute wind. Again, more of those harmonics. I played down low, they're really cool. Put through reverb. Ocarina. And since it's just a single sample, I made it more like a pad with a long release. You could shorten this. if you want to use it that way. There it is, totally dry and more playable. Yeah, so I had it longer for the uh, Mega Magic version. Uh, Trimlo, wind. Does crazy stuff as you go farther down the keyboard. It's even better. Put it through reverb. So here's the uh, solo whistle dry. <laughs> and then I took this and I layered four of it and one was dry and three were through three different choruses from different companies, different plugins and made an ensemble. So here's dry ensemble.
and then through the reverb. Again, little noise doesn't bother me. If the noise really bugs you, <laughs> all you have to do is go over here, call up an EQ, do the studio EQ, set this to be a low pass filter, and just bring it down. Because most of the noise is higher end stuff from the microphone. You can bring it down. However you want, okay? Um, I think that's it of the samples. So that is the core library. There's over 150 patches. Now with the stuff from Steve added, there's like 170 patches. So it's a just a ton of just single samples. They're all the same treatments. If it's a loop, it's gonna be a slow attack. If it's the Mega Magic, it's a fast attack with a longer release and the mod wheel makes it to go to a slow attack. Whereas the loops, the mod wheel makes it go to a fast attack. Okay, so after that, now we get into just crazy land. And I'm gonna leave most of this for you guys to explore and discover and have a great time with. Um, I'm gonna show you a demo song. I have this friend of mine named Bob Dides from Greece. Okay, so he did two demo songs, one called Winds of Heaven and one called Winds of Sorrow. And I'm gonna play just Winds of Sorrow because this is the one that's just like, oh my gosh, <laughs> incredible. Um, I believe he, I'll put these under the SoundCloud when I get the final mixes tomorrow. These are not the final mixes. So this is a little early, but I wanna show them anyhow because they're so cool. Using only the, the signature patches and Steve Tavaglioni's new patches of the new samples, um, there will be a dressed and a naked version on the SoundCloud on the Plug and Guru uh, Mega Magic Bells and Winds page for you to listen to. This is the dressed, so this will be. There's a few things, not a lot, but there's a few things added in there from other libraries, especially some of the percussion and stuff at the end. So, so I hope you enjoy. So lucky to be able to do this um so there's signature patches i'll show you some of mine real quick there's patches as you can see um by all of these people contributed midi head which is mike babbitt you should please check out his libraries at ilio um the edm libraries he did a new collaboration dance library they're more in the dance genre but they're so well done and flexible and it's so great to have him on board so please go to ilio.com and check out his libraries as well because you can't have enough sounds, especially great inspiring sounds, and his are inspiring. Um, there's Kid Anthon, Alan Polly. He made a whole bunch of patches. Casey Baldwin is also Exosun, so he double tagged himself. Jason Schopfer did uh, Northern Lights. Yours truly. So you got the Laurent Verona's Airwave patches. There's Mike Babbitt's. Steve Tavaglioni, I tagged him for the stuff that's his. Um, these are patches that... Um, these are... That flute in there just adds.
just such a nice added element to it. And I, I have it shaped so that it fades in and out. Like, see how the flute comes in and out? So it's there. And then goes away. So you're left with the bells. So you're nice and cold. Or alone again. <laughs> Gods of Troy. So there's not just the pan flutes and the harmonicas and stuff. There's this is one that built. I did where it's uh, two of Steve's sounds. Move the mod wheel. You're actually moving the mod wheel through the granular wavetable. You're doing this with the mod wheel. So that's pretty cool. Um, there's a, and then uh, Taylor Harris, my assistant, he made one patch which came out. Almost could be a keyboard sound, but we decided to keep it in the winds. So there's so much in this library. Dry. Magical and a pad. From so many of these. Then the bonus sounds. They're, I, I want you just to go through them and have fun. I'll tell you this though. They, they are not just straight ahead normal stuff okay so here you gotta check this out so this is using um the chimes through the wave shaper that's without the wave shaper so the bells are used in all sorts of different ways there's a That's using samples from the library. So there's stuff for everything. I mean, it goes. We showed that earlier. Great piano sounds from the wind sounds. Some of these I partnered and, and finished that other people started, so these are not all 100% mine. It's all good. I am the executive producer, so it all goes through me in the end, and everybody's okay with it. They let me do my thing, so we end up with what we have. It goes on and on. So please enjoy the library. Um, it's came out really special. Um, and I'm really curious to see where guitars is going to go. There's so much source, so much work. Uh, it's going to be really great. So thank you for your support. Enjoy, be creative, be good to each other, and we'll see you again soon.